قال تبارك وتعالى في كلامه المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا وسندنا ومولانا محمد مبارك وسلم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم من صلى عليه صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها أشرا وكما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم رب زدني علما رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم المؤمنون كرجل واحد إن اشتكى عينه اشتكى كله وإن اشتكى رأسه اشتكى كله أكما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام Quick note as the brothers are going around, inshallah. That if you are putting your Sadaqat al Fitr, let them know that it's Sadaqat al Fitr and doesn't go into the Masjid collection, inshallah. Sadaqat al Fitr has to be kept separate. <coughs> this entire month of Ramadan and this day of Eid. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us as Muslims with the collective worship that we have engaged in throughout this month and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to come together to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. He Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal has reminded us of the concept of being one as an Ummah. Being united as an ummah. That communal worship during the month of Ramadan and our coming together on the day of Eid. The celebration of the end of this month of Ramadan which Allah has ordained for us to do collectively. That from the Sharia perspective and from the Sharia, having Iman in our hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a bond and a relationship between ourselves that carries responsibility. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam outlining this responsibility mentions in a hadith Al-Mu'minun karajulin wahid that the believing fraternity of men and women are like one single body. In ishtaka aynuhu, ishtaka kullu. If one limb from that body is in some sort of pain, then the rest of the body does not shut itself off from that limb. And the Prophet ﷺ gave the example of the eye. <coughs> that if the eye is in pain, the entire body feels that pain in some way, shape or form. The discomfort is felt everywhere. 
وَإِنْ اِشْتَكَ رَأْسُ And if there is a headache, اِشْتَكَ كُلُّ When you have a headache, you aren't able to say to the head, you deal with the pain. The rest of the body wants to rest. In fact, it can be the small pinky finger on your hand that you injure, but the rest of the body feels the implications of that. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam was informing us and telling us that the fraternity of Muslims is such that even if one Muslim from around the entire world is to feel some sort of pain and discomfort, then the relationship of Iman is such that that should cause some sort of discomfort to the rest of the fraternity. That based on this hadith and a verse of the Holy Quran, one would be correct in saying that the faith that we possess mandates the faith that we profess and that we say we are Muslims mandates that any discomfort felt by anybody from the Muslim fraternity would affect us. And similarly, any prosperity that anyone from the Muslim Ummah undergoes and feels, then the rest of the Muslim, if they come to know of that prosperity, would be happy with that. Many of us, when this hadith comes, when we try and put this hadith into practice, we only think about the aspect of someone being in difficulty. And we think that as a Muslim, my responsibility is that if somebody is in difficulty, then I need to feel some sorrow for that. But when it comes to someone's prosperity, then there is no happiness or joy. In fact, the corruption of the heart is such that there's actually, there's actually sorrow on our behalf that someone else is prospering. There's an actual grief on our behalf that prosperity is felt by somebody else. But Al-Mu'minuna karajulin wahid mandates that an individual who professes the Islamic faith should be hurt with the hurt of any other Muslim and should be happy with the joy of any other Muslim. That is what this concept of unity mandates. The Sahaba Kiram, they understood this. Sa'ad ibn al-Rabi, a Ansari, resident of Medina al-Munawwara. And the story between him and Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, a Muhajir from Makkah al-Mukarrama. This account is related by Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, in his Sahih. That when the Muslims immigrated from Makkah to Mukarramah to Medina to Munawwara, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Ansar, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّأُوا الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ That the Ansar they actually liked when the Muhajir came to them. يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا And if the Prophet ﷺ ever gave the Muhajirun some sort of preference, they never felt it inside their hearts. They never thought that, wait a minute, they have come from Makkah to Mukarramah to Medina to Munawwara, they have come to our land and they're still getting treated better by the Prophet. They never felt it in their hearts. 
Saad ibn al-Rabi. When this happened, when this immigration started taking place, the Prophet ﷺ developed something called Ukhuwa between the Ansar and the Muhajirun. <coughs> Today we marvel how people are accepting refugees from around the world, or well not around the world, just one particular place. Um, opening their doors and they're getting some sort of incentive from the government. The Prophet ﷺ, when he asked, not when he asked, the Prophet ﷺ, when he told and commanded the Sahaba Kiram, that this Muhajir has come, oh you Ansar, he becomes your brother. Sa'ad ibn Rabi, when he is informed of Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, who being designated the refugee with him, Sa'ad ibn Rabi, he takes Abdul Rahman ibn Awf by the hand and he says, let's go home. And he says to Sa'ad, says to Abdul Rahman, that I, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed me with a lot of wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me multiple residences. So Abdul Rahman, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made you my brother. Thus everything that I possess, half of it is now yours and half of it is mine. If such a mandate was required from us sitting here right now, that someone has immigrated and we brought him to the front of the mezzanine and said, well, we're going to choose somebody to be that person that makes them their brother, how many of us would be able to, number one, accept that? The Prophet sallallahu he sends Abdul Rahman ibn Awf with Sa'ad ibn Rabi. Sa'ad ibn Rabi says, Everything that I possess, nisfulli wa nisfulla. Half of it is mine and half of it is yours. Also, Ya Abdul Rahman, I have two wives. I have two wives. <coughs> because you are my brother now, Allah's Messenger has made you my brother. He didn't say, I will divorce one and you can have the other. He says, you look at both of them, whichever one you want, you tell me I will divorce that one for you. He gave Abdul Rahman the option that you tell me which one you want to marry. Hmm. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Allah reward you. I have some savings that I have bought with me from Makkah al Mukarramah. Dullani ila souq. Show me the path to the marketplace, I will make my own provisions, inshaAllah. When I have my provisions, I will inshaAllah marry someone as well. Islam teaches us the concept of being one. And these occasions are a reminder of that. <coughs> but how much of that concept of unity and oneness resides in our hearts? Every aspect of the Sharia is about unity. <coughs> the very famous poet, Dr. Iqbal. He mentions in a poem, almost complaining about the situation of the Muslims, that manfaat is ummat ki ek hai, nuksan bi ek. That the prosperity of this ummah is a collective prosperity. And the downfall is also collective downfall. The taqada of Iman 
is that if someone is hurting, everybody is hurting. And if one person is prosperous, Alhamdulillah. When we hear of the prosperity of others, the taqada of iman is that we become joyful by, by that. We become happy by that. But our hearts, subhanAllah, that when we hear the prosperity of somebody else, it bothers us. The ek hi sabka nabi, deen bi, iman bi ek. He carries on, he says, that our prophet is one. Our religion is one. Our faith is one. Everything brings us together. Haram al pak bi ek, Allah bi ek, Quran be it. The qibla that we pray towards is one. The Allah that we worship is one. The Quran that mandates and dictates our life is one. Kuch bari baat thi hote jo musliman bhi ek. What would have been an accomplishment? Is that when we see the concept of unity being pushed and pushed and pushed upon us, if only we could have become one. If only that sense entered ourselves that Allah wants us united. And He's hinting in this that had we understood this, then Muslims would have seen for themselves what they're capable of and what they can accomplish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> what he wants from us this concept of unity subhanallah we don't understand the value of it we have uh, from the islamic and shari'i perspective as soon as somebody says the kalima la ilaha illallah Every other aspect about that individual has no bearing. The ethnicity means nothing. Their social status means nothing. Abu Idris Khawlani. Rahmatullahi alayhi. He says, once I entered the Masjid of Damascus. And I saw an individual there I've never seen before. There was a nur and radiance upon this person. He was smiling and there was this radiance that was emanating. So I asked some people that knew me, then who is this person? They said, this is Sayyiduna Mu'adh ibn Jabal, the companion of the Prophet So he said, Subhanallah, Mu'adh ibn Jabal. So he sat down and he waited as people were coming in droves to meet Mu'adh ibn Jabal. And he said, I want to sit with Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala by myself. I want some time by myself. So he waited and waited. He didn't get a chance. So he said that tomorrow when he comes, I will come to the masjid first, so I can see him first. <coughs> the next day, Abu Idris al Khawlani, he says, I entered the masjid, Mu'adh ibn Jabal was already there before everybody else. So he said, I waited for him to complete his salah. And after he completed his salah, I came from the front to meet him. And I said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And he responded to the salam. And I said, Ya Mu'ad, inni la uhibbuka fillah. That, O oh Mu'ad, I love you for the sake of Allah. That how Allah has commanded us to have love for one another, inni la uhibbuka fillah. I love you for the sake of Allah. So Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala he said, he looked up at me. And he said, Allah, 
Are you sure that you love me for the sake of Allah? And can you swear an oath to them? He said, Allah. Abu Idris al-Khawlani said, By Allah, I love you for the sake of Allah. So Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala looked down and then looked back up at him. And he said, Allah, for the sake of Allah, you love me and nothing else and you can swear an oath by that? Qultu Allah. He said, By Allah, I love you for the sake of Allah and for nothing else. Allah has commanded us to do this. Then Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala he looked at me and he said, Abshir. Abshir, that take the glad tidings. For indeed I have heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam say, Wajabat mahabbati lil mutahabdina fi Allah. Wajabat mahabbati lil mutajalisina fi Allah. Wajabat mahabbati lil mutazawirina fi Allah. And wajabat mahabbati lil mutabadilina fi Allah. That take the glad tidings, if you are truthful in what you say, then Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal has said, from the tongue of the Messenger Wasallam, that my love is wajib, mandatory, incumbent for that person. So I will love that person, or those people who love one another for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, who sit with one another for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, who visit one another for the sake of Allah, and who spend on one another for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Such is the value. And subhanAllah, time has run out, so we need to conclude. But what is the effect of that? I'll simply relate the hadith and conclude. A hadith mentioned, again, with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when I love, when I love a person, I call Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam and say to him that, Oh Jibreel, I love this servant of mine, you love him as well. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam then takes this message to the angels and says, Allah loves this person, he has commanded me to love this person, you also love this person now. It doesn't stop there. Then the malaika descend to the earth and announce on the earth that Allah loves this person. Jibreel alayhi salam loves this person. We as angels love this person. You also, O creation, love this person. And that's why you'll find that those who are the beloved of Allah are beloved according to the makhluk as well. You find the accounts of, you hear of the passing of a scholar who's beloved to Allah. You don't know him. You've never seen him. You have no relationship to the person. But you think, if only I could be there in the person's janazah. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah, in that time, in his janazah prayer, there were a hundred thousand people that attended. One hundred, because he was accepted by Allah. You want to be beloved? Become the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do you become the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Going back to the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, have love for one another. The message is very simple on this day of Eid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us together. But the coming of together should not be tokenistic. Our hearts should be for one another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand this concept of unity within Islam and the importance of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove the evil sicknesses and the illnesses that reside in the heart of jealousy, of rancor, of hatred. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to have this love that becomes the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving us. Wa akhiru dawan, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakallahumma, bihamdik. Wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruk wa natubu ilayk.